G'day, and welcome back to that new hobby high, Ultramarines from Scratch. Um, last Thursday, I was invited to a 7,500.6 army battle, and it was bloody spectacular. It was uh, Raven Guard, Iron Warriors, Thousand Suns, Salamanders, Dark Angels, and my Ultramarines. It was hosted at the Beyond Odyssey up here in Perth, and I just want to thank Beyond Odyssey for letting us play. It was some beautiful tables, and it was absolutely spectacular scenery, absolutely gun start to finish. <laughs> it was really, it was really, really a fun game. I've never seen that amount of anything laid out. I mean, if you look at it, how much it would have costed, it would have been fucking a huge amount of money on the on the table. Just, it was brilliant. It was so good. Um, I played everything I had, uh, 2,000 points, and the um, the everyone else had 2,500 point army. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just go over some of the high points of what happened, and then I'll show a hodgepodge video of uh, edited together clips of the actual game and then go over some of the things I've learned. So it should hopefully just be a short little video of uh, of the battle. First off, um, I asked everyone, it, it was a really good fight. Uh, the, Iron, the Iron Warriors, Thousand Sons and uh, Salamanders, I feel were just absolutely, would have probably won if it wasn't for our... Uh, our right of war, or Nick's right of war with his Raven Guard, which was Decapitation Strike. He uh, won the game for us with that, because for every Warlord we killed, we got an extra three victory points. Um, so we obviously targeted the Warlords. We started off with Night Fighting, which crippled the Thousand Suns horrifically, to the point of the poor bugger just having... Almost, well, it looked like he was not having fun. Just everyone was just hounding on his Terminators. The Segment, I think they were called Segment, but uh, but Sam's Thousand Sons. They um, once once the night fighting was over, I think it turned three. Just uh, just were starting to show their teeth. But by that by that point, the game seemed to be over. Uh, Nick's Salamanders uh, were devastating. From what I saw, I mean, they the he, one of his uh, uh, dreadnoughts killed my uh, my praetor, just squished him. I didn't know you can't chase things down in Terminator armor, but a fucking contempt the dreadnought can chase things down. It's four times the size. How does that work? But nonetheless, squished him flat. Um, and he uh, him and his uh, salamanders owned about a third of the board up the far end. Um, Oliver's Iron Warriors, I personally think he should probably get uh, MVP uh, because everything he had on the table, everyone was trying to pinch off and get rid of quickly because it was the most threatening. When three people warn you not to shoot a unit because they shoot back, well, that's fucking terrifying. So everyone was saying, you know, don't, don't just try to avoid that area of the table. And, you know, it's true. His, um, his barbarous folk, I think his warlord, completely squitted my entire unit of Terminators and his anti-tank destroyed my Spartan in turn one. Just absolutely savage. Um, Steve's Dark Angels were, oh God, such a nice army. Um, he had lots and lots of tanks. Unfortunately, they all pretty much blew up in first and second round thanks to, uh, thanks to uh, Oliver's Iron Warriors. He had those plasma Sicarians. Uh, he had a huge, uh, huge Terminator charge out of his uh, Spartan. It looked like into some Iron Warriors and some Salamanders, and they all got squitted into nothingness. But he did destroy the um, the Terminator, the Iron Warriors. I think they were called Siege Tyrant. I, I can't recall, but they were the ones that had rocket packs on the top of them. They were spectacular. Uh, uh, Nick's Raven Guard. He, I think, he only at the start of the game only put down one Leviathan Dreadnought. Everything else came from uh, came from uh, the reserves, and he just dropped in like thirty billion Terminators behind uh, uh, behind Sam's Thousand Sons, and just slowly stomped up the board with them. Uh, it, it was a great game, start to finish. It was so much fun, and it was oh, I really, really fucking enjoyed it, start to finish. I do feel that my Ultramarines on the table were there simply to make up numbers, 
because when everyone else is filled in legion specific units and you're just got a uh, out of the box you know a couple of tactical squads and a small unit of terminators and a couple of rhinos you're not really seen as a threat and uh, i think i, I actually uh, proved that because um everything either got killed run away at the end of it i had seven tactical support auto cannon dudes just peppering and peppering away at a building but there were some there were some brutal little uh, uh units on the table um i'm just trying to think remember the name of them katie's necks barbarous folk uh and more deathian um and you know a leviathan the Black Dark Angels Leviathan, just being a Leviathan, stomping up and down the board, killing everything. I loved it. Thank you very much, Beyond Odyssey, for letting us play there. Thank you, Nick, Sam, Oliver, uh, Steve, and Nick. And uh, it was brilliant. So uh, watch this little video of us, everyone uh, of, of what I took. And, uh, yeah, it's hodgepodge and put together, but uh, in the end, it'll... After, after it, I'll, I'll go through some of the lessons I learned. But uh, yeah, it's just look at the scale of the thing. It was fucking epic and I loved it. Absolutely loved every moment of it. Check it out. Okay, I'll do my best to make sense of this. All right, we had Nick's Raven Guard, Oliver's Iron Warriors, Sam's Thousand Sons, and Nick's Salamanders on, my side, on one side, and Steve's Dark Angels and my Ultramarines on the other. Nick's Raven Guard didn't really only deployed a single leviathan because every single part of their army came from reserves or deep strike in the next couple of rounds he had a big nasty carrier called kd's next who just appeared in the top of a building and started blasting away at characters being an absolute pain in the ass the opposition uh, my troops all moved forward there was some shooting and i think i got rid of a small squad of iron warriors that was really my only win for the entire game uh, these there was a whole heap of uh, I think they were called siege tyrants, and I was warned by three separate people, do not shoot them for fear of they being shot back. Um, there was a couple of really nice uh, plasma tanks there as well on the uh, Dark Angel side. Um, my Spartan rolled up and got blasted to hell, killing most of my uh, killing my uh, Terminators inside it, uh, most of them. Uh, it was very disappointing, and all I did was basically take snapshots. Uh, so my big 300-point Spartan just destroyed. Um, everyone asked me why I didn't take a flare shield, and my answer was, it was expensive. I will know better for next time. Um, lots of movement the rest of the game. Uh, let's see now, there was uh, more Deathian uh, blasting away at characters, um, the uh, Katie's next was blasting away, and I think he got charged by a heavy weapons team up in the tower there. Uh, my, yeah, I was just trying to troop forward. That rhino there on the side basically gummed up that entire corner. No one could get fast, and I couldn't get forward. I had a single win, my own personal self, the best shot of the game. It was that five-point hunter-killer missile killed one of those uh, warsmiths retinue. So I was stoked with that. They, uh, and my um, rest of my Terminators charge in for uh, combat. Uh, see now, what else happened? Oh, so much happened at the far end of the table. But you're in, when in a multi multi person game, you only really fixate on your own, and it's really you miss out on so much of the rest of the game, especially when everyone's going left and right and rolling dices, and try, you're just trying to keep everything up. Uh, Nick here is uh, teleporting in some, I think, about three hundred Terminators behind the uh, behind the Thousand Sons, who apparently, because they it was night fighting, lowered their leadership and they were absolutely useless and couldn't cast a single spell or do anything. That's why they got their pretty much, you know, three turns of night fighting and they pretty much got wiped out. That um, Katie's next got wiped out by the heavy weapons team. Both my rhinos, uh, no, one my one of my rhinos is destroyed. The first Leviathan blew up, killing a good portion of my tactical support squads. Uh, that's the siege cannon hit some more of my and that big thing there with the yellow bulldozer blade hit uh, another one of my squads, wiping out a good portion of it. Um, the, that, uh, that Spartan charged Dark Angel Terminators into these uh, Salamanders and Iron Warriors here. And I, um, I do believe they came out second best out of that, that, uh, 
that uh, engagement. Um, the siege uh, siege torrent got uh, flamethrowered by interdemptors and got wiped out to a man and then killed in return fire. So big scary terminators with the rockets like the uh, Iron Warriors Fulmentaris, I think they are. They they just they just wiped out, got wiped out and wiped out in turn. Uh, so we're sitting here at the end of this massive melee. Hundreds and hundreds of fellas. Oh, yeah, my, uh, you can see my Praetor there ran away, only to be um, squished by a uh, Salamander's uh, Contemptor. Uh, yeah, the Salamander's pretty much owned a third of the board at this stage up that end. Um, uh, let me see. Steve, with his Dark Angels, only had a single Contemptor on the field at this point. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, no, that Leviathan, not a Contemptor, and he was just stomping up the board, killing, killing everything he touched. Uh, I only had seven uh, tactical supports, and I just was peppering this building full of uh, heavy weapons teams. There was a, a laser sniper unit that was just picking off characters. Oh, it was, it was brutal, start to finish. Anyway, we went, ended up winning um, because the Raven Guard have a decapitation strike, and they had three warlords, all which died. So we got nine victory points over the rest. But it was a bloody good fun game. Oh, fuck, I enjoyed it. Nice game, everyone. Top stuff. Well, if you made it past that five minutes of uh, ramblings and shaky cams, you're a stronger man than most. But as you can see, it was an absolutely epic fucking game and it's just it was monstrous um what can i say about it in hindsight i had a few learning experiences from it first off is that if i'm going to have a spartan and i equip it with ordnance weapons then don't put terminators in it just have it as an ordnance unit um putting it putting the terminators in it expecting to run them up the board into combat but having ordnance weapons on the tank, bad, bad combination. You either move and shoot, move, don't move and shoot, or you move and don't shoot. Uh, which I just had the, the worst of both aspects there. My personal um, man of the match was a single five point hunter killer missile, which killed one of uh, Barbarous's folk, Barbarous Folk's elite bodyguard. And. Um, I need to learn how to use my rhinos a lot better because one of them gummed up an entire board edge for an entire game. And I couldn't get the men out and I couldn't do anything with it. So it was basically, you know, 100 points just doing sweet FA down the far end. The, um, the, uh, the, what else? I think I need a little trolley. A little trolley that I can slide under the table to have all my books on. Because having the books on the table just ruins the aesthetic of the bloody of the game, you know. Fine with dice, you can ignore a dice, but a big bloody two open books. Yeah, I think I need. I think I need a little, bring a little trolley for next time. That would be a lot lot easier on the big games. Uh, I need better units. I am currently working on some better units, but uh, the bare basic of what I have is good for bare basic games against elites of three other armies. Oh, I did. I was a candle in the wind, like the Bette Midler song. Uh, it was, but I really enjoyed it. I just enjoyed the fact that I was invited along and got a chance to see some big, big armies in action. Um, I didn't. The, the one thing that I will say about the larger games is you do not get to see every bit. Like everyone, every almost every person who was there was playing had a bit of fucking awesome, amazing, a shining star moment. You know, for in um, when the uh, when the rocket pack pack terminators got wiped out by a charging group of dark angels, or the or the little the jet packing dudes jumping over buildings, it was it was everything that, that happened because it was all happening at once, and you're just looking at your little patch of army. You don't get to catch all the other absolute star moments that the other lads are having, and that's that's upset. And I went down the far end to see what was going on, and. Because, you know, it's, it's at the far end of the table. The table's like four metres long, three mm. metres long. And you, you'd walk up and expect to see the Dark Angels and the Sally's, uh, Salamanders getting into each other. Then you go up and you just see like three Salamanders rhinos and a, and a, and a Iron, Warrior, uh, Iron Warrior tank and no Dark Angels to be seen. What the fuck happened? I've no idea. It was obviously epic. 
Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I do know Steve. Well, he, at least he very much seemed to enjoy stomping up and down the board with his uh, um, Leviathan Dreadnought, absolutely squishing every goddamn thing he came across. Um, and uh, Nick, uh, Raven Guard Nick had a character that just appeared out of nowhere and just started blasting. Uh, that appeared to be his entire rule. I put him where I want, I shoot what I want, and then I go where I want. Oh, and you can't shoot back to me because of rules. Um, yeah, oh, and there was, a, oh, there was a laser, there was an Iron Warrior laser cannon sniper squad. It was such a, it was such a good game, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the, the Beyond Odyssey has absolutely spectacular scenery, all fully painted, resin, resin top boards. The first couple of moments when the, all both armies are laid out and, you know, it's a perfectly clean board and you just look at it and it just looks, oh, it just looks so, so, so good. I've, and, uh, you know, as, as you progress into huge melee or shooting and tanks go up, I think I need to make some, uh, make some. What would, you, what would you call it? Centerpieces, you know, like if uh, if the tank blows up, maybe make some smoke or some uh, some some fire to make it actually look like a wreck that you got to walk around and deal with. Um, and actually, maybe even start to create some dead uh, dead space marines and actually place them where the uh, where they fall so you've actually got a body body count on the uh, on the uh, tabletop I think that would look great sort of look like that scene from um, I don't know I saw an animation lost hope beyond hope uh, betrayal of hope something like that really good stuff but um, yeah I really enjoyed it so thank you to Nick Oliver Sam Nick and Steve and beyond Odyssey for an absolutely fantastic experience 7500 points. I, it just makes me thirsty for more miniatures, more games, and more Horus Heresy, and I absolutely love it. So uh, thank you very much for listening to this. Um, I hope I didn't waste too much of your time. I really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed the game and uh, really enjoy making and sharing all of this with you. You all take care of yourselves and have a wonderful Christmas and an absolutely cracking New Year. Yep, uh, love the lot of you. Take care.